It could be the future of transportation. This week, the first full-scale test of Hyperloop One was conducted in the Nevada desert. Supporters say the ultra-high-speed system could get you from Los Angeles to San Francisco in just 30 minutes. But Hyperloop is not the only company vying to perfect this ambitious design, which has led to a competition some are calling the Hyperloop Wars. Joining us now is Tim Fernholtz, a reporter for the business news site Quartz. Tim, good morning. Good morning. This is something that was dreamed up by Elon Musk, the CEO of Tesla, a few years back. I mean, basically, we're talking about Hyperloop is basically something that would rocket people through a tube at like 760 miles per hour. The speed of sound. Nearly, yeah. It's very fast. Uh, and it was Elon Musk came up with it because he was tired of watching the debate over California's high speed rail, which is over budget and delayed, mm -hmm. and no one is sure if it will really get done on time. And Elon is convinced that this combination of existing technologies, so we already have maglev trains, you take that and you put it in a tube without any air and it can go super fast. Uh, he thinks that's going to be a cheaper solution going forward. And now companies are taking him up on it. I don't think anyone who hears this doesn't think it's great because it could <laughs> apply to my city and things could move a lot faster. But I am curious, at 750 miles an hour, what happens to your innards, sort of your body? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's hard to say because no one has, you know, tried a human passenger in this. We can look at the renderings the companies have developed. Uh, think of a tube basically 11 feet wide four chairs in it, like compression chairs, because there's going to be like a G-force pushing you back. Yeah. Uh, it doesn't necessarily look super comfortable right now, but on the other hand, it's half an hour, say, instead of a six-hour drive, so you'd rationalize it. The issue here is not the technology. That exists? The technology has been proven in different ways. Uh, it's never been integrated into one component. What we saw this week, there was a test where one of the companies demonstrated their propulsive sled, how the capsule would move along a track. But the question is not really can we build it, can it be done on an engineering level, it's does it make sense, is it cost effective relative to other ideas for mass transit? I recognize asking you to define magnetic levitation is hard. <laughs> like, what is you a didn't really, warn me about that. What is a really basic way, because comparable systems exist in both Japan and Europe. Sure. How do can... they make this work? Basically, it's uh, electromagnets. If you think of, you know, as a kid in school, if you had a magnet that was positive and one that was negative and you try to push them together, there's that resistance. So you take advantage of that by creating a capsule that will levitate basically on a magnetic field and then shoot along this railway or through a tube. There are other big name players involved in this race to develop this. Why is it getting so much attention? Well, I think everyone is impatient with, especially in the United States, the transportation solutions we have here. And we look at Europe and Asia where they have much faster, much cleaner trains, and we want to do better. Um, so companies like GE are investing in this. Uh, France's National Railway Company uh, is investing in this. So there is a sense that people are looking for new innovation in this area. It's still not clear if it will be any easier to get the right of way from private landowners to mm -hmm. build these tubes where you would need to build them. What is the next step? Like, when could we actually see some real significant changes? So the company that did the test this week, Hyperloop One, hopes by the end of the year to have a Kitty Hawk moment where they have a fully functioning Hyperloop track going more than 700 miles an hour. Right. The next step is finding someone who wants to pay to build it on a real usable scale. So they're doing feasibility studies in Sweden. They're doing them with the ports of Los Angeles and Long Beach in California, maybe to move cargo containers off ships. Uh, another company called Skytran has a partnership in Nigeria. Uh, so it's really finding a government, a city, who will put a couple billion dollars behind actually launching the system. But if there's a will, this could be only a few years away? It's possible. That's certainly what the backers say. There are, skeptics in the, there are skeptics in the urban planning community that say, look, these guys are not ex you know, expecting the regulatory red tape that a lot of these projects get hung up on. Such a game changer. Tim Fernholz, thank you very much. Good to be here.